Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi and welcome back to a continuation of this uh, new series on Mecca and of course the idea behind this particular uh, video series is that we are trying to compare and con contrast the uh, traditional Islamic narrative and with that we are looking at actual data, actual evidence actual research that was done sometimes uh, way in the past sometimes just recently and anything in between that will reveal to us additional information that will be antagonistic to that standard uh, Islamic narrative or sometimes even it exposes that particular narrative and it shows a lot of weaknesses maybe even a lot of cracks in that particular narrative. Today is no exception. We're going to be talking about the geographical problem when it comes to Mecca. What we mean by that is this. If you want to know about Mecca from the Quran, it's absolutely not the same Mecca that exists today. I've been to Mecca, by the way, and there are many things that are used in the Quran to describe Mecca that does not fit with reality. And that's why today's show is going to deal with this geographical problem with Mecca and with me here in the studio is our dear brother, Dr. J. Dr. J, welcome back. Oh, good to be back again. Here we are, Mecca, the place that has been around since the beginning of time, well, since the beginning of humanity, and the place that Abraham rebuilt the Kaaba, the place that all the trade north, south, east, and west went through that gave it its importance. This is the Mecca that we've been told. The standard Islamic narrative has always pushed Mecca. No one's ever questioned it. You didn't question it. I didn't question it. None of us questioned it because why would we want to question until we started scratching a little bit in the ground? Remember like the phrase we always say, the more you scratch, the more you find. The more you find, the more we shine. The more we shine, the more they whine, oh how sublime. Here's another whine. They're going to be another huge bit of whining after they see what we're now finding. And it's this geographical difficulty. We've talked about the historical problems. We're now going to look and see, well, see, the great thing about Mecca, it's a place. It's not a man, Muhammad. It's not a book, the Quran, which uh, can either be superfluous, be it could be that they were just so insignificant that no one retained it. We're talking about a place and a pretty large place, a pretty important place, a pretty historical place, and a place that exists in a geographical location. So let's start and ask what we're going to do. What we're going to do, we're, first of all, we plan to go back to the seventh century. And we're actually going to be, begin be before the seventh century. We're going to go prior to the seventh century to the period when Islam began, leading up to when Islam began. So we're going to go back to Arabia, your mm -hmm. country, your, well, it wasn't your country at that time, but it was your land, including the Hejaz, which is your area, because you come from the very land, you come from that part of Arabia that supposedly Adam and Eve came from. And we're going to see where Mecca is situated, and then we're going to say, suggest that there is a problem. And to do that, we need to start with the maps. Now, we've done these maps before, but I want to look at these maps once again, because we've learned something new about them. Remember last time when we looked at the maps, I said, here's a map from 7th century, here's a map from 6th century. Remember when I said that? Mm -hmm. And I thought these were from the 7th century, these right. were from the 6th century, because that's what everybody told me. That's what we've always assumed. This is even what Patricia Crone thought. Well, we found something new. These aren't maps from the 7th century at all. These are maps from the 15th century redacted back to the 7th century. This map here... If you look right here, let's take a look. Uh, this map here is one that I introduced in the last series. We looked at it and we said, that's a 7th century map. Well, and no, it isn't. It's re actually, it was created by a guy named Leinhard Holle in 1482. How did he get this map? Why did he put this map together? Because this is Ptolemy's map. And everybody called it Ptolemy's map. But Ptolemy never made any maps. They didn't make maps that early. They didn't make maps because... They didn't have a bird's eye view of looking down. They didn't even think about looking down. They, if anything, they would just take coastal barriers and that, and just pr pr uh, create coastal barriers and put where the, the 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 cities were. It was in the 15th century and the 16th century they started making maps. But what they did is they went to Ptolemy's writings, and they uh, assumed by looking at his writings that these were these places were, putting it on a map. 
Mm. So all these places you see here, take a look at all these these names, names, name, 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 name. Notice it shows that there's an awful lot of peoples right in here in the central part of Arabia, right? That's right, yeah. I mean, you can see the Red Sea, you can see the Indian Ocean, you can see the uh, Persian Gulf and or the uh, Arabic Gulf in there. Straits of Hormuz, you can see all that there. There's mm -hmm. a gul way up there is the beginning of the Gulf of Aqaba. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and when you look at this, it, what's really interesting is that seems very heavily populated. Doesn't yes, it? I mean, from uh, the names in there of towns, of, yes, it does look heavily populated. What's missing in that map? Well, I mean, let's see, is there a name Mecca in there? Nope. Mm -hmm. This is a second century, where that question mark is, is where Mecca is. If you look carefully, there is no Mecca there. Not at all. That would have been the right location for it if it was there. How come Leonard Holdy never brought this up when he created this map? Well, because Ptolemy never listed it. Ptolemy never brought it up. There, he didn't know of any Mecca, and what's fascinating to me, by the 15th century, they should have known Mecca, because Mecca, by 1400s, had been around for, what, we've been told, 700 years by that time? Well, since the time was Adam. Oh, okay, but certainly by the time Islam began, which is right. in the 7th century, now That's we're right. in the 15th century, so you're, you're talking about almost seven, 800 years. Here's another map. This is another map we brought up last time, and this one is by Laurent Fries in 1541. Notice? He's going back to Ptolemy's writings, and he puts his map together. But take a look. Mecca's not there as well. Fascinating. And it's this kind of stuff that we need to look back at and ask, why is it these guys in the 14th and the 15th century, uh, 1500s did not know it? Here's another one that I had put up together. And this one was created by Sebastian Munster in 1571, looking at Ptolemy's map, looking at, not map, sorry, not map, looking at Ptolemy's writings, geographical writings, and they're called the geography of Arabia. What's interesting, Mecca's not there again. Now, I noticed this before when we brought it up before. What I didn't notice is that none of these are from the second century. These are not from the time of Ptolemy. And by the way, I mean, it's interesting because he did capture some really uh, nice geographical features, mountainous areas and so on and so forth. So why would he miss such an important city when he paid attention to other things? Obviously, and mm -hmm. it looks like either he's putting in there haphazardly. Now, this is one that is attributed still to the seventh century, but I, there's nobody that I can come up with that actually claims that this is seventh century. Mount. Regardless, do you see Mecca there? We don't see that, but I mean, I would tend to agree with you because this one is way advanced in, in the way it's drawing the Arabian Peninsula and the Gulf area and the Red Sea. It seemed like it's almost like uh, uh, ahead of its time if it was 7th century. I would say that this is not a 7th century map. It has, it really, the Arabia looks too good there. Actually, this is much better than the 14th and the 1500s, the 15th and the 16th century. That's what I'm century. saying, exactly. Same with this one here. Here's another one that's attributed to the 7th century, but take a look at it. It actually gets it quite correct, except, obviously, what's missing is Mecca is still missing there. Now, who's attributing them to the 7th century? Well, people today are attributing them, and that's why I'm, I'm, we've been, I was looking all over and saying, how do we know? And nobody can really support that. They're just saying, this is a 7th century map. This is what it is. They're doing the same thing today in the 21st century that the 16th and the 15th and the 16th century people were doing. They're saying, this is from the 2nd century of Ptolemy. No, this is not. They're just doing the same thing again. They're taking the names and they're redacting it back. And this is typical of an awful lot of people. I, I remember getting a lot of reaction in my, my, my comments from people down below. And they were saying, you know, we have a map I, I've studied in college, I studied in high school, and there's a map, and Mecca's on that map. I said, okay, well, when was that printed? Well, it was printed in my textbook. And when was that printed? Well, with, in the la fact, this century, okay? And, of course, anytime you talk about Mecca, you're going to put Mecca there. Because you're going to put Mecca there today, because it's there today. But it was not there in the second century of Ptolemy, and we're going to get into Ptolemy. We're going to see what, exactly what he did say. And it certainly wasn't even there in the 14 and 1500s because they didn't know about it, except they should have known about it. And still they didn't put it on that map because they actually, if you want to ask a question, they were actually doing the correct thing. They were just following what Ptolemy said. Mm -hmm. And Ptolemy never mentioned Mecca. So the maps need to be redone. We need to now relook at it. And we need to say from here on out, when we start introducing this in our studies, in, our, uh, in any of the schools, we need to make sure that we go back and we need to ask, why is it the maps didn't do it? Well, the reason the maps didn't do it is because Ptolemy didn't know about this place. Now for the next, what I want to do for the next episode, I want to look then at the Qiblas. 
And this is the good one from Gibson. This is what you did talk about. We're going to talk about Gibson. We're going to unpack that very quickly just to remind people because then we're going to go back after Gibson. We're going to start looking at what Ptolemy did say, what Pliny the Younger said, uh, Agathargetes. This is, this is the Greek explorer. What did he talk about? And we're going to be looking and seeing exactly what history tells us from the geography from what we now know today, and we're going to see if Mecca is in, is in any one of their geographical locations. That's wonderful. And uh, this is, of course, very helpful information. And, and again, I, I want to speak to our viewers. Notice we give you maps, visual things, resources, and we allow you to go and uh, do your own investigation. And by the way, we, we sometimes appreciate it. Some of you come to us and telling us, hey, have you guys thought about this? Have you thought about that? Or uh, here is a counter argument to what you are stating. We welcome all of that. In fact, this is the whole reason why we do this, because we want to make sure we know about all the objections that could be raised out there to give us the chance to either refute or if we cannot refute it and we discover that it is compelling, then we will be the first to actually go ahead and talk about it because our motive at the end of the day is to try to prove Mecca did exist when we were told that it existed and that the Quran originated from where we we're told it was originated and that the direction of prayer was towards what we were told it was towards and that's Mecca and the list can go on and on and on. At the end of the day, we want to help you. We are not here to try to create uh, theories or to try to create um, anything that is deceptive, as uh, sometimes I get comments like this, as if we somehow dreamed about things like this, and somehow we're making a pile of money just by spreading things like this. I mean, it, it would be better for us, by the way, to write a book and sell it once and for all than to do series like this, and every now and then we come back and Dr. J will adjust what was said before. Uh, I mean, why would do we do that? Because we want to keep up with the findings we do not want to just run with one narrative and refuse any other findings that could be helpful to that particular narrative that we are trying to share with you. So hopefully you'll find this particular series to be helpful, just like the other series that we've done when it comes to the historical criticism. Brother, thank you so much as always, and we're looking forward to uh, the Dan Gibson's uh, research in, uh, in terms of Qibla for next time. Thank you, everyone. This is Al-Fadi. God bless you.